You're on. Hello. I'm Dr. Bittaker. I'm back to do another pause. Uh, this time we're going to do the pineal pause. The um, pineal gland is a gland that actually sits inside your skull. There's a place here called the glabella, and right back in the, into my brain, about an inch or so, inch or so, is a, a pineal gland. The pineal gland is sensitive to light. Even though you may think that uh, light would not penetrate my thick skull, actually it does a little bit. And the purpose of the pineal gland, because it actually is made of t tissue that's very similar to the eye, is that it is sensitive to light. And it's the thing that tells us humans to go to sleep when it gets dark. It also tells all the other animals in the world, like little doggies and kitties, to do the same thing. Because it releases a, a chemical called melatonin, among other things, and it causes a lot of other things to occur. Now, uh, one of the ways that we get a pineal pause is, and the way it shows up in most people is in the form of insomnia. They can't sleep. They don't sleep as well as they should. In fact, in the United States and Western countries, up to 23, 24% of the population, at least fairly regularly, takes some type of medication to help them sleep properly. This is not good. Here's why. Let me give you a couple of statistics on uh, just how bad insomnia can be for you. This is a study that was uh, just, uh, I saw, I ran across, it came out of Sweden. Trondheim, Sweden. Uh, it involved over 54,000 people for like about 10 to 12 years. They studied them and their sleep patterns. And here's what they found out. Those people that had chronic insomnia had almost a 50% higher probability of having heart failure, heart attack, and death than those who did not. That gets your attention? So not being able to sleep properly is bad for your health, and it causes a whole bunch of other diseases that it contributes to also. And also diseases cause insomnia. So there's, there's a two-edged sword on that. Uh, now, what about some of the treatments for insomnia? Well, you need to be careful with that. One of the more common things we see with people who take barbiturates and or sleeping pills, and I warn people, I said, one of the problems with sleeping pills, and the patients will mention this, is that when they wake up the next day, they feel like they're hungover or they're, they were beat, you know? And the reason for that is, is that I said, you made your eyes may have been closed all night, but you weren't really sleeping. You were unconscious. It's not the same thing. You see, sleeping is actually a very complicated procedure. Your body goes through a lot of activities while you're asleep. And there's a reason for that. Now, let me show you an example of why I think the natural approach to insomnia, or at least a pineal pause condition, is a lot better than the medications. Here's why. Here's a study. Uh, this came out of Canada. Um, University of Laval in Canada did a study. Uh, this is reported in the Canada's National Population Health Survey. And they followed some 14,000 people for 12 years on this, and they found out that those people that took sleeping medications, as prescribed by the doctor, and also anxiety medications, they did together or separate, because a lot of times people can't sleep because of anxiety, those people had a 36% higher mortality rate. You're that right. If you take sleeping pills, you take an anti-anxiety medication, you increase your likelihood of dying by 36%, according to the study, for 14,000 people. That should get your attention, and here's why. Um, when you sleep, your body goes in and out of light and deep sleep. There's a reason for that. You ever seen a, uh, somebody sleep or you watch a kid and sometimes their eyes, you see their eyes, that's called rapid eye movement. That means they're dreaming. If you don't remember your dreams the next day, you're probably not sleeping correctly. Even though you may be having dreams, you should be able to re remember them. And by the way, that's an indication of a vitamin B6 deficiency. And remember when you take your other B complexes, Make sure they're the methyl form, M-E-T-H-Y-L. Just trust me on this. It costs you like, two cents more per pill, but it's worth it. it it's much more active form. And, and as I said, using uh, your remembering of, mem uh, of your, of your, of your uh, dreams is a way of finding out if you're getting adequate levels of that particular vitamin. Now, you go in and out of light and deep sleep. Um, you have to do this to maintain sanity. You know, one of the ways to drive people sane, insane is just to deprive them of sleep. And, you, and their health will go downhill. People could die from a lack of sleep, so don't underestimate it. Now, when you go into the deep sleep, that's when the brain, the, and the pineal gland signals the pituitary. The pituitary then releases what's known as growth hormone. The growth hormone signals all the cells in the body, particularly your stem cells, to start regenerating and rebuilding the damage that occurred locally uh, due to whatever you did that day, like you stubbed your toe, you cut your finger, or you uh, worked out too hard. And the material that the bodies are going to use to rebuild and regenerate those cells is made in the liver, and the growth hormone stimulates the liver uh, in, a, in a kind of circadian rhythm, because uh, the liver will 
speed up for an hour or two, then slow down, go dormant, and then speed up and slow down all night long. In other words, it's producing. See, it, it, the growth hormone is released in a pulsatile fashion. That's how your body regenerates. That's why the next day you should feel invigorated because your body rebuilt everything that night. Now, if your body's not rebuilding things, you got problems. This is one of the reasons why we have people with, um, who have chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. You know, they ache all over and they're tired all the time. And guess what? I've never run into one of those patients who did not have major issues with insomnia. It just goes with the territory. So, so anyway, it's a, um, uh, it's it, it, it's common for those to go together. So here's what we do. First of all, is uh, uh, some things to, to do and not do to help you sleep better. Number one thing, uh, don't do the stupid stuff like you know drink some espresso coffee before you go to sleep at night. Another thing you want to do is make sure your bedroom is very very dark at night so that it signals your your your, your pineal gland to release the melatonin. If there's neighborhood, your neighbor's light is shining in through the window, or even those who have these uh, night lights, you know, they're very bright. You should get the ones that are, that, are, that are sensitive to motion. They turn on so that way you don't fall down if you've got to get out of bed at night, but they, they don't stay on, they turn themselves off. You want an absolutely dark room. You also might want to make sure you don't have any electronic devices too close to your bed. I've had people who had trouble sleeping under an electric blanket. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, so that, that's, that, those are some of the things you might want to do. Also, looking at one of these things right before you go to bed, either a high-definition television and or a, um, a computer, the blue light in there, that can upset your circadian rhythms in your body and fool your gland. Also, having a lot of light in your house, you might want to let the lights get a little dim later on in the night. You know, in, in primitive societies that don't have uh, electricity, they pretty much go to bed at sundown, or at least go to sleep. They may food around for an hour or two, but they get about 10 or 11 hours of sleep per night. Whereas we get, a lot of us will get five or six hours of sleep, or, even, or even maybe much less than that if you're having insomnia. So that's one of the things to do. Now, another thing is what you eat before you go to bed at night. You ever do this thing where you eat some uh, carbohydrates, like some chips, you're watching a movie, and then you fall asleep on the couch, then you wake up an hour or so later, get up and go to bed, and you can't sleep? Well, that's because you depleted your tryptophan. Uh, you, the carbohydrates do cause a tryptophan release. Tryptophan does have a, it causes serotonin. Serotonin has a calming effect on the brain in some people helps you to sleep, uh, but you may deplete that before you go to bed. So your last meal of the day should be a low carbohydrate meal. Cut the carbs on that. The rest of the day, do whatever you're normally doing, but that time, keep it low carbohydrates and, you, and you'll just simply sleep better. And also I mentioned about alcohol, that can in dramatically interfere with sleep too. Uh, there's some other things that interfere with sleep. Uh, you're uh, surprising enough, monosodium glutamate, food additive, some people are very, that's very toxic to some people. That is it. It's toxic to the brain cells. Also, your aspartic acid, which you find in some of your, your artificial sweeteners, stay away from those. Um, the, uh, the amino acid, phenylalanine and tyrosine, if you get excessive amounts of that, you find that in some weight loss products that can cause sleeplessness. Uh, guarana, which is an herb, people use that to try and lose weight. doesn't work, but, you know, that can keep you awake. Also, um, the, uh, some of your drugs that you may take, uh, like uh, some of your tranquilizers, those can in effect actually interfere with sleep. And even if you've been taking sleeping pills, they can eventually get to the point where they cease to be, become effective and actually backfire already and cause you to not be able to sleep. So the, that's one of the things that can occur. Uh, now, one of the things we recommend, and um, this is something we get really good results with, we have a product called Best Rest Formula. Um, with two capsules, it's uh, just to tell you a couple of things that it has here. Uh, I'm going to look up some of the research on this. One of the things it has is the vitamin B6, and it's got the, the activated form of this. And um, this, is, this is really important um, because of the um, B6 is activation of, of certain pathways in the brain that allow the, ser uh, the, the, uh, the gamma aminobutyric acid to be processed correctly, which is the brain's natural tranquilizer, and also the serotonin to be pro processed correctly. That's why you have to have that for those, those two neurotransmitters to work correctly. Uh, also, another thing that we have in here is a thing called valerian. Um, here's a study from the Culture Diversity, Diversified Ethnography Minor Psychology Study of 2000. Again, it's used there. It was quite successful in this study. Over several thousand people that it was tried on. Um, that's a, that, I understand that's an extracted form like we have here. Also, we had a chamonil extract, which is in here, which is, uh, let me see the percentage on this. I don't really need this except I want to read something. Uh, the chamonix eel um, is a, um, it has a, it's, it's a Matirisica with Cuba extract. It's, it's an acid herb. We have the linen ball that's 5% rosamanic acid. The uh, valerian is 
0.8% valeric acid, that's an active ingredient. So these are assayed herbs. Um, here's a study on the, um, the use of the, um, the hops. Uh, hops extracts are excellent uh, for calming the uh, central nervous system down. So that's one of the things here. Let me get to the research here on the uh, use of the, uh, uh, of the uh, gamma amino butyric acid. This is a study done in the uh, journals of psychiatry. Uh, showed that it's quite effective, as effective as any sleeping aid for that, because it is the brain's natural tranquilizer. And also, the, uh, the number one here, one, is the melatonin. Uh, melatonin is the actual uh, hormone that's secreted by the, uh, uh, by the pineal gland, which then signals the brain, the pituitary, and all this thing is supposed to occur. And that's what actually then signals the release of the gamma butyric acid that calms you down, makes you go to sleep. And so uh, we, we, two capsules of this have one milligram. Sometimes people will take uh, melatonin and it kind of backfires on them and may, uh, they may get too much. I have people start off with five or six milligrams. They don't do that. Uh, in fact, two capsules contain one milligram. I recommend starting off with just one capsule about 30 minutes before you go to bed at night. Now, I point out one thing to people, particularly if they've been using sleeping pills that knock themselves out. This is different. This doesn't knock you out. It allows you to sleep. But once people use this particular formula, they find out they have a nice restful sleep. They wake up the next day. They remember their dreams. Uh, their body regenerated and recuperated like it's supposed to. I've had patients that have fibromyalgia that we get them to sleep, and that sometimes will fix their fibromyalgia. Your body just simply not regenerating. Same thing with chronic fatigue. You're just not rebuilding itself throughout the night. The purpose of going to sleep at night is literally to recharge your batteries. That's the purpose of it. All right, well, I'd like to thank you for listening. And um, uh, we're going to be back uh, on our next one to cover some other topics. We're just, we've got a total of 32 of these things we're doing, so uh, be sure to, to watch next time. Also, uh, if you want to call up and ask me a question or you want me to cover a particular topic, just call the 800-326-5838 number, and you'll talk to me or Susie or whoever just happened to be walking by. Thanks for watching.